the art of using a ball gauge and a telescoping gauge. And believe me, it is an art. The feel that you have to develop for reading within a couple of tenths takes a little bit of doing and, and, and it just, it's that art that we're talking about, that intensity of, of, making a, of, of making good judgment when you feel that it's just right. And that takes a little practice. This is a telescoping gauge that's an import and I frankly don't like it. I think if you're gonna measure within a thousandths or so, it's probably okay. But when you try to snug it up, it just doesn't give you a good feel. And believe me, the, the, when you snug it up, it's got to be just right or you're going to get a bad reading because it'll, it'll act like a spring. So this one, I think, I don't know if it's a Starrett or Brown and Sharp or Lufkin, but it's an older model. And I really like the feel of this. So this baby is, is, would be my choice. Ball gauge, not quite as important. As long as they're not worn, you're going to get a pretty good reading with them. So we're going to start with two things we're going to measure. 375 ID in a bushing and one and three quarter inch uh, master ring. So let's start with a bushing and I'll show you what we're gonna do there. We've mounted in this V-block, which was one of our sign set V-blocks. I like to put it in there because it's holding it for me. Now keep in mind, when you're holding this, you sure as heck don't need a wrench to hold it. If you put a wrench on it, you're liable to get it out around, so you don't want to do that. So I like to put my hand like so, go inside, and you have to rock it back and forth until you feel it. And I've got it there, but it's too tight, so I'm going to back off until I get it to where I think that it's right. Now remember, this is going to act as a spring. so. If you, if you feel this and it's too tight, you're going to get a false reading. And you've got to keep this in mind, that whatever degree of feel that you have here, you're going to want to do something similarly with the mic, with the mic when you decide to check it with, uh, with the mic as well. So now I'm not quite happy with that. I think it's going to be right about there. That's pretty good. So if I were to close my eyes, I don't know, Jim, uh, by the way, Glenn's on vacation. So we've got Jim in here sitting in for him. If I close my eyes or look away, I don't know if you can zero in on that, Jim. My guess is My guess is it's right about there. Well, we got 375 on the money. That's what it says. Now, how do I know that the mics are correct? Well, cleaning the anvil is important. If you've got any grease or grit in there, it's going to give you a bad reading. It's, it, it, when you're trying to read within a couple of tenths, that little bit of grease will have an effect on it. I like to wipe the gauge blocks on my wrist because it's cleaner than my fingers, but more importantly, it puts just a little bit of oil on there, which gives you the lubricant that you need for that feel. And you don't want to be using it for a C-clamp. You just want to feel that nice little bit of drag in there. I'm going to lock it down, so I'm comfortable with that. And if we check it, I don't know if you can see it, Jim, but that's 375 exactly. So these mics, I know, are in great shape. One thing about the anvils on the micrometer, when you're going to use them, you're going to set the micrometer, or use it for that matter, if you have any grease or a smudge on, on either side, it's going to give you a false reading. It's important that you keep the anvils clean particularly when you're trying to set the mics with gauge blocks or if you're trying to measure anything flat. Not so important if you're measuring something that's round because it'll get out of the way, but it's just a good idea to keep it clean. When, 
we have carbide tips on this. I'm not afraid to use a little bit of uh, uh, paper towel. I prefer that over a, a rag. And if the anvil is clean, you'll get a much better reading with the gauge blocks when you're trying to set them. So critical that you keep the anvils on the micrometer as clean as possible. Check them first. You can put them in the light. You can see the reflection. If there's any dirt in there, that'll tell you. One last thing. If you drop the mic and you bend it, how are you going to know if it's bent? Now, picture this. I, again, I like to exaggerate everything. If this is on an angle, like so, how on earth are you going to be able to check anything flat or round? You're going to get a different reading in the front than you will in the back if this is on, a, on an angle, right? So it's important that you make sure that if it's dropped, you need to send it out to lab and get it rechecked so they'll lap these in and reset the mics. So that's the tip of the day for the micrometers. We have two roll pins here, 375, which is a nice slip fit, and we have 376, which will not go in the hole. So we know that this is 375. Now, it could be 375 and 2 tenths or 3 tenths or 4. We don't know that because the roll pins are thousandths apart. But I'm comfortable with that, that that happens to be 375. And by the way, this is the one we checked. So we're right there. So that explains how to check a small diameter using the ball gauge. Now let's talk about the telescoping gauge. That's another matter. There's three steps to this process. The first one is to insert the telescoping gauge into whatever it is you're going to measure. In this case, it's a ring gauge. Wiggle it a little bit. Step two is make sure that you have it on an angle like I do. Snug it down to step two. Pull it through step three. That way, you'll get just the right amount of tension in here, and you should get a good reading on the mics. Remember what I said about the different types? Also, keep in mind that while it's not important if you do it this way, if, or if you check it that way, or if you check it in the middle, I prefer to do it in the middle because I think you get a better feel for it. So the idea is to put it in the gauge, snap it, let it open up, snuck it down just a little bit, and here's the tricky part. If you get it off center, you're going to get a bad reading. So you want to make sure that you get, you get it stabilized so it's exactly opposite, not one way or another, and give it a little gentle touch, and you should be able to go right through there without any problem whatsoever. And checking this guy, I don't know if you can see that or not, Jim, but I'm showing on these mics about 375 and maybe, boy, that's real close, maybe 375 and a tenth or two. So is it right on the money? Boy, it's pretty darn close to being 375. What we could do, I've got some gauge blocks here that are set up, and again, I like to wipe can't express the importance of the cleanliness. So I've set this up so we have three seventy five right here. Now the scale on this is five tenths here to five tenths there. So it's basically a thousand scale. Now this is a little challenging, but we're gonna try to see if we can't find a high point here and see if we can't prove that this is indeed what we checked. Oh boy, this is really challenging. Whoop, there it is. There we go.
Wow. I knew this was going to be a challenge. Keep in mind, I haven't done this in a long time. There we go. Where are you? I don't recommend doing this, by the way. I think telescoping gauges are, are great to be used with mics. And I don't know about trying to read it off of a indicator like this. There we are. There it is. I mean, how do you really know that that's the high spot? That's the magic of the feel. And I think I had it there. So, But I was comfortable with that because when I showed you with the mics, I was within a tenth or two and actually checking it here. Assuming that I found the high spot, which I think I did, uh, that was within less than a tenth. So that's kind of the magic of using a ball gauge and a telescoping gauge. And believe me, it takes a lot of feel. I can't emphasize enough that, look, if, if I come in here and if I really snug this down, like so, I'm going to get a different reading. Well, that's showing about, you, you're going to have to trust me on this, but that's showing about three tenths bigger because I snug this down. And remember, you get, you get a little spring action in there. So you have to be very, very careful when you're using uh, telescoping gauges that you find the high spot. And more importantly, you don't want to do this three times, by the way. You don't want to go through here once, twice, three times. One time, that's it. Then go in and check it. Because if you go back and forth, you'll lose the high spot. And in this case, it's, it happens to be right there. It's, it's like about a tenth plus. Again, one more time. Let the spring out, snug it first, go in there, try to find the approximate center. It'll find its own center as, it, as you uh, move it. One time. Don't do it twice unless you start all over again. Then come in here with the mics, and I'm assuming you've got good mics, and double check it. And again, I'm showing that it's repeating within a tenth or two. So that's, that's the trick to using a telescoping gauge. Time for lunch or dinner, whatever it is. And that's the trick to using a ball gauge. You got the same thing. And, and I, don't, I don't recommend trying to hold it and do it. You really need to secure it in something. When you're going down to this diameter, you've, you've got to get in there with your hands. And it's a little different feel because with this one, you don't just allow the spring to set it. In this case, there's a spring in here, and you lock it down. That sets it. Not so with a ball gauge. Ball gauge is a different animal. You've got to actually have the feel. And that takes a little doing and a little practice of getting used to. You can see where it's almost standing up by itself. So that's about where you want to be. But you don't want to be uh, any bigger than that. You're going to get a false reading because, again, this acts as a spring to some degree. So that is the trick and the secret to using a ball gauge and a telescoping gauge. I hope you have fun with it. And I want to thank all the viewers out there for your comments, for your suggestions. Uh, please keep them coming. We love it. Uh, good or bad, we want to hear from you. Got some ideas for some videos? Pass them on to us. We'll be glad to make them for you. So thanks for watching.